Well, welcome, folks. Well, here we are again um, with Multi Hold Solutions doing one of our popular webinars. Uh, as we do each fortnight, we're just going to hold fire while uh, the registered participants join in with us. And then we will um, get rolling with today's presentation, which is a very good one. It's the Iliad 50, which arrived in Australia a few weeks ago. Brand new uh, power catamaran. And having had already a, a, a good walkthrough of the boat, it's very impressive. So I'm looking forward to, to today's presentation uh, with Marcus Overman, who will be walking us through the boat, and Mark Elgington, the CEO of Iliad. So once we get everyone who's registered joining in with us, we'll commence the, uh, the walkthrough. Um, the picture that you see there is of the uh, Iliad 50 uh, off the shores of Morton Island, Tangaluma. So those who are familiar with that uh, part of the world, a great place to cruise. And that was done oh, probably two months ago, mid COVID. And it was a film shoot that was done with the, uh, both the Iliad 50 and the Iliad 70. So you'll have been, if you've been on YouTube or on the uh, Iliad website, you'll see a lot of the uh, imagery that's coming out of that, uh, that photo shoot, which was uh, very successful. Okay, so today, as we do each week, this is, believe it or not, our 14th webinar in the multi hole Solutions webinar series. Um, we started these back in May as a, a way of connecting with uh, our clients during the uh, COVID shutdown, and the success has been fantastic. And as you may be aware, all of the uh, webinars that we have done, we've recorded, and they are all up on the multi hole Solutions YouTube channel. So you can uh, go to uh, multi Hole Solutions YouTube and go back and watch any of the uh, presentations. About five or six weeks ago, we did a walkthrough on the Iliad 70. So if you haven't seen that one, it's certainly worth uh, going back and watching. Now today, uh, you can ask us questions anytime you like. We uh, would love to take your questions and pass them on to Marcus and Mark. Uh, to do that, you just click on the Q&A box. Uh, which is up there in the top of the screen or on the bottom of your screen, but in the black bar, if you click on Q&A and you can type your answer, we'll endeavor to answer that as we go. If it's a question that's relevant to the section of the uh, boat that we're talking about at that time, or we will hold it over to a Q&A session at the end. Uh, our next webinars, Cruising Resources is the next one uh, for, the, uh, for, for those who are interested on the 23rd of October. And that's where we'll be talking about some uh, some apps and support uh, some support tools that you can use when you're uh, out there cruising, whether it be power or sail. Uh, and then uh, two weeks after that, we're going to do a really good one with the guys from the Down Under Down Under Cruising Rally on sailing to and cruising the Southwest Pacific on the sixth of November. Can you believe it's November? A reminder too, uh, if we just click back there, those who are in Southeast Queensland or anywhere in Queensland for that fact, and hopefully New South Wales, if the borders open, uh, there is a, uh, the Sanctuary Cove boat show or a condensed version of the Sanctuary Cove boat show that's normally held in May is being held this uh, November on the, uh, the 13th, 14th and 15th of November. So just a reminder that we'll have some of our multi hole solutions uh, yachts and power vessels and power catamarans on display at that show and we'd love to see you there. My name is Greg Boller, I'm the new yacht sales manager for multi Hole Solutions and holding the camera today very capably as always and uh, managing the production behind the scenes of our webinar is Rachel Crook. So uh, I think Rachel's muted at the moment but hello there Rachel. So we're going to meet Mark Elkington today, we'll uh, have a chat to him shortly. He's the uh, the person who gave birth to the uh, to the concept of Iliad catamarans and has got it uh, very capably to where it is today with a number of vessels uh, having been launched and certainly a number of boats in the pipeline. Mark and I have been working together for well over 20 years uh, from way back when we used to run Sunsail 
and uh, is, Mark is certainly a very capable member of the marine industry here in Australia and through the Asia Pacific. And then joining him today to do the walkthrough is our specialist power expert, Marcus Overmans. Those of you who are uh, making inquiries and talking to multi hole Solutions about our power catamarans, you would have come across Marcus. And he again is a gentleman with uh, a wealth of experience, uh, especially after many years selling power, um, big power boats uh, up there in Thailand. So it'll be good to uh, have Marcus walk us through the Iliad 50 today. Uh, just a reminder before we jump aboard the Iliad 50, uh, the, the range at the moment, we have the 50, the 60, the 70, and the 90, which is coming soon. Uh, here in Australia at the moment, we have the 50 and the 70. Uh, 60 will be with us uh, early next year, but we'll get Mark Elkington to give us a chat about that. Uh, and the first Iliad was brought to Australia at the Sanctuary Cove Boat Show in uh, 2019. Uh, that was the, the official launch of the product there. So in a short period of time, it has certainly got some traction in the marketplace and some very happy owners. Um, just before we hand over and do the walkthrough, just a reminder about the Iliad catamarans and why we say it is the power catamaran of choice. It's safe and comfortable, long range blue water power catamaran. Has the longest range in the market, two and a half to 6,000 nautical miles. And today, Marcus will give us some information on fuel burns and cruising speeds and so on. Uh, some real uh, flexibility in terms of uh, each client being able to have a say in the customization of the design to reflect the individual styles. Uh, it's got the protected grounding skegs, making them beachable in emergencies, which is very important. Uh, and Iliad holes are manufactured with an all vinyl ester hole. So uh, they're fully infused vinyl ester and uh, not just the outer shell. We've got a few different layouts that we'll talk about today. And so what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll come to those layout slides uh, towards the end of the walkthrough. But for now, I'm going to turn my camera off. I'm going to stop this share screen here. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to turn my camera off. And that will bring into full screen mode, Marcus Overman. So welcome, Marcus. Hi, Greg, and welcome everybody to this walkthrough of the Iliad 50 here on the Gold Coast. And as Greg alluded to in the introduction, um, Iliad, uh, not a production shipyard. They're a, a boutique shipyard building bespoke um, power cats from 50 to 90 feet um, with semi-customization available. And so if you're looking for a, a boat that gives you good range, very comfortable, and the natural, natural stability of a cat, then uh, Iliad is something uh, worth looking at. So uh, I think we'll just go straight into it and uh, come aboard. So before we do that, I'll just explain a little bit about the freeboard. So on all the Iliad yachts, uh, we have very high freeboard to give the boat as maximum bridge clearance off the water as possible. That gives them much better ride in rough weather. So you can see the tunnel clearance under the boat here is, even with this platform, is 850 mil, which is one of the biggest in the class. So again, that gives a, a nice ride in all types of weather, stops any slamming or any dashing under the boat. Um, the first thing you notice is this boat has been fitted with a hydraulic tender platform. So this is a 24 volt system that can lift up to a tender up to 450 kilos, uh, any length that you like. Uh, and I'll just demonstrate for you now how it operates. So you don't need generator running to operate this, it runs off the batteries. You'll notice as it's going into the water, it's extending out past the transom of the boat or the platforms of the boat. That enables us to put as 
log a dinghy as possible without being restricted of the distance between the hulls. So this will go down 350 mil into the water. And obviously we would just custom fit some chocks to whatever tender you choose. So a 450 kilo tender, you should be able to get a four and a half litre center console with a 40 horsepower. Really nice tender on the back. Just to comment on that design of that tender lift, Marcus, it's very clever, isn't it? Because none of the mechanical parts of that lift actually go into the water. That's right. So the aluminium tray is the only section that goes in the water. All the gear, the hydraulics, stay out of the water. So it's a very robust system uh, designed in Italy and built in Taiwan. So this is the first boat that we've had um, come with it and it's uh, been really popular so far. So there are other damage systems. We can put a crane on the flybridge, which we can go up and talk about later or we can have the traditional Davit system with uh, an electric winch uh, bringing the uh, tender up that way. So and there's just, a few different options. And just to check again, what's the working uh, load capacity of that, Marcus? Uh, four, 450 kilos. So onto the bathing platforms here, they're really quite wide, great for fitting on your diving gear or snorkeling gear. You've got a swim ladder here, on here on the starboard side. You have a hot and cold shower, just here, and a fresh water inlet uh, for shore, shore fresh water. So moving up into the cockpit. I think Initially, we'll go straight up to the foredeck and we'll show you what the front of the boat is like. Well, Marcus is walking along there. I think it's just amazing, isn't it? That the, we're, we're, on, we're on a 50 foot power catamaran uh, here. This is such a voluminous or such a large amount of space for a 50 foot boat. Yeah, it's a really sizable boat. It feels a lot bigger than you, than you think when you're on board. But it's still at a very comfortable size that it's easily operated by couple. So with all the space and advantages uh, it produces, it's still easily managed. And the way it's been designed is particularly for that, for a couple or short crew to do some extended cruising. So on the foredeck here, you can see initially there's two double sun beds with reclining backrests. For 12 knots, it's a really nice place to be. And in the afternoon, when you're at anchor, if there's any wind around, it's coming straight in through the big hutch. Um, the anchoring system is cleverly hidden down here. You might need to come around the range. So you've got a 1500 watt 12 volt um, anchor windlass with a very deep anchor well, 100 metres of chain, and these switches, foot switches here to operate up and down the anchor windlass. Also, of course, you can operate from the interior helm or the flybridge helm. Um, just after the anchor well is access to the grey and black water tanks. Not that you ever really need access to them, but what Iliad have cleverly done is tried to create as much storage space as possible. So this actually in practice becomes a really good place to keep garbage bags. You know, if you're out for a week or so, or a couple of weeks, the garbage does um, pile up. And this is a good place because it's completely sealed from the rest of the boat. So with a couple of uh, plastic tubs in here, you can keep the rubbish in there until you can get ashore and, um, and then get rid of it. So as we know, storage is always an issue on any boat. Um, but on the Iliad, you have two very big lockers here on the bow that can be used for a lot of gear. Fender, line. So here on the port side, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's a two meter deep locker which has the bow thruster. And this is a good place to keep the fenders, the mooring lines, the 
if we put some shelving and buckets in there, we can keep all sorts of gear. We have done before, we've put a stand for fishing rods, even dive tanks in these, in these spaces. So, um, never have enough storage. On the starboard side, normally it would be a carbon copy of what we just saw, but on this particular boat, we've We've demonstrated how this one can be used as a crew cabin. So in there is a single bed and under the bed is a, which lifts up, is a toilet sink and this area is air conditioned and could be suitable for a, for a crew member. So it's really just to demonstrate what can be done. As you know, there's a level of customization available. So if you decided you want a workbench in there with a vise or more storage shelving, something like that, that could all be accommodated. Good for a naughty member of the family. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see from here, Rach, you can see how high we are on the water. So it's a good 2.1 metres up here to the deck. And then that's the beginning, obviously, from that very deep winter there. Lowest point being in the back. I look at aft, you can see the top of the superstructure with the searchlight, which is remote controlled from the helms, the hard top, which has the solar panels on top, and obviously the radar and all antennas. So we'll, we'll get up to the flybridge shortly, but um, we'll head, head back towards the cockpit. The side decks are 600 mil wide, so you've got plenty of room. These are 750 high, so they're at a good safe height. This is an opening side gate, so if we if you pull up alongside a wharf or a jetty, um, you can easily get on and off. Or let's say you're rafting up to a friend's boat, uh, this makes uh, for easy access in and out from the side of the boat. Notice here the size of the, the bollards, bollards here. So it's really heavy gear that you won't see on a, a production boat. This is really, really heavy stuff that, um, that you'll only get on an Ilio. So we can have an option of uh, mooring capstans here with foot switches. So on a 50 foot boat, it's debatable whether you need them, um, but the options there if you do want. There's the rope blockers just there. Now, now, Marcus, just before you walk away from there, you came down the side of the boat then and you've got the logo on the side, the, the Iliad logo and the 50. At night time, does this boat have that impressive modern look with all the, the back lighting and the LED lighting? That's an option, not on this particular boat, but we have the option, this boat's a stock boat that we've brought in to Australia for the Sanctuary Cove Boat Show next month. So it's still not owned by anyone um, and it'll be sold available at the show next month. Um, and then we can put the backlit LED uh, names on the transom and logos is up to you. Okay. Who have we got there? Hello, Hello Mark. Mark. How are you? Good, thanks. So it's good to see you and uh, obviously you're very proud of this, uh, the latest Iliad 50 you've brought into the country. Yeah, um, we, uh, we are. We're excited uh, to, to show this boat to the market. This has got uh, further changes as we do with every boat we build. We keep on innovating and uh, listening to, to customers and uh, it's amazing the more people that go through our boats, the comments that are made quite often we get something that, that we feel is a, is a great idea and we infuse that into the next uh, run of boats we build and um, I'll be more than happy to show some of these features for particularly for people that have seen an Iliad 50 in the past if they've seen uh, one at the boat shows in Asia or in Australia uh, or been on one of our boats with a, with a with an owner uh, there's some really nice subtle changes we've made in the boat uh, which uh, just enhanced the, the lifestyle on board Nilia. And so around you there, I see one of those is the cockpit fridge. 
Yeah, well, look, uh, you might, uh, for those that might have seen uh, Iliad's on display in Australia last year, we had a, an accordion door that, uh, concert, you know, that, that sat next to the wall here, which the concept was great for what we thought we wanted to achieve, which was to maximise the opening, but the negative was we lost the access to this area. So now we've got a good storage uh, area below for vendors. Uh, ultimately, it's for the get chairs that go around the table here. But now we've got a 130 litre drinks fridge um, here in the cockpit, which serves a cockpit for entertainment really well. So the these are compromises. Every boat's a compromise. Uh, but at the end of the day, you want to put uh, the, the, you know, the lifestyle of the boat is critical. So we, we think this is better for our market. Um, to, to have the storage, the fridge, and we've gone to a sliding door uh, across the range now. And just while you're there, I mean, before we hand back to Marcus, the, I think a lot of your other changes are around the galley area, is that correct? Yeah, well, if you'd like to wander through, first of all, we had a panel uh, that was a movable panel that uh, fitted in in the sliding opening here to give you a flow through from the galley to the serving bench. We've now just created a really clever idea, a fold out solid teak panel that drops over and straight away you've got a seamless servery from the galley to the outside uh, for the dishwasher. So dishes can come in, I can rinse them and straight in the dishwasher. So it's seamless now, we don't have to pull out a panel that clipped in. Um, it's a, everything's connected and integrated so uh, you know, less, uh, less hassle to create what we did in uh, the earlier boats. It's not a bad spot to do the washing up either. It's great. Uh, yeah. for the up. It's, uh, but the dishwasher can take all that hassle away. We also put a, uh, a rail uh, here that we felt was critical for some of the sea trials we've done in really hard conditions. Uh, this was an area that uh, people were feeling a bit unsafe. We've got a very good secure handrail here. Now you can navigate your way through the boat in a rough offshore conditions. And you've got rails to grab hold of all the way through. You can see we've got a rail at the table. Uh, so I can come in a big seaway. I've, I've, I've always got something I can grab hold of walking through the boat. Um, now can I, we, can I ask a question, uh, Marcus? Have you finished uh, talking to us about the cockpit area? Uh, no, there's a few features here that we should point out. So this is a lovely bar area which um, becomes a very popular place uh, when at anchor. Um, so in this particular boat we've now got a rubbish bin here and the storage shelf just there. And on this side, we've got this locker is the gas locker. So if you have gas oven or gas um, stove top, we have the gas bottles there. And then we can have gas barbecue, a portable gas barbecue here or a permanent one up on the, up on the fly ridge. So the cockpit seating is a 2.4 meter wide bench seat which is still with storage underneath. And then this dining table with the chairs that Mark mentioned, the uh, foldable director's chairs. Um, you can happily sit eight people here. And this becomes, here on the flybridge becomes your main dining positions on board. So when you're not in dining mode, we fold it away. It's on the tea table and it becomes less of an obstruction and it has cover when it's not being used so it's a really nice uh, really nice setup twin heavy duty pedestals so it doesn't raise up and down it's uh, totally fixed we decided that this would become the main dining um, area on the boat because i mean look it's such a beautiful place to be uh, you've got and you can you, you can fully enclose the uh the cockpit area with uh that obviously fold down canopy. Yeah, because this place has just arrived, we haven't got around to that and we're going to do that. It's a personal choice for people. If we put one colour on, whoever buys it will probably want a different colour, so we just leave it to the eventual owner. Um, here is extra storage again with Iliad. We try, they try, they do a very good job of um, creating as much storage on board as possible. So that's a good place for cleaning 
here, uh, your short power leads you can see in there. And uh, I think that's it for the cockpit. You've got speakers here, LED down lights, and you've got courtesy lights up and down the stairs. So, Rach, if you want to move into the... And, and the, the reason I was asking about if you'd finish in the cockpit is because there's quite a bit of industrial noise coming from up the track there. Is Once we step inside now, can we shut the, the, the back doors so we've got a... I, I think uh, I'd like to show a demonstration, Greg, on the yes. noise... Uh, uh, I guess insulation and sound management system that we've done yes. a lot of work on with Iliad. Uh, we're going to give you a demonstration of that. I think that's gone now. You know, okay. Once we're inside, it's quite considerably quieter anyway. But uh, I just run through, we got a lot of feedback in the early boats about uh, the noises there again, is it? But, uh, uh, we put uh, a whole new Bloom uh, uh, drawer system in the boat. So you've got every boat comes with uh, with with the uh, interiors of the drawers. You can make up your own system for knives and forks and for all your your cutlery on what size, what areas you want. Um, this is a really you know finding every bit of room. We we, we managed to re-engineer this part of the uh, below the bench tops and create very small drawer areas. We've also uh, found a very clever locking system. Uh, whilst they're all soft closed drawers, uh, and generally when you're just you know floating around at anchor, um, there's no need to lock all the drawers off. You know you just want to open, grab something, uh, close them, but they're all positive locked at sea. So you can, as soon as you go to sea, you positively lock them and you cannot open these drawers. We, we have issues, uh, you know, Cupboard catches on boats are a challenge. I think many boat owners would have experienced this in their life. But uh, these were a great positive locking system. We've also changed the drawer system for these overhead cupboards. For shorter people, they're, they're, they're quite difficult to get to. So now we've engineered uh, a system with, in, with uh, basically uh, a shelf on the inside for your wine and uh, you know, wine glasses and things. And we can easily access every part of these drawers now. This is the same on both sides. And again, really nice positive locks. Uh, this side as well, great place for your herbs and spices, salt and peppers, you know, stuff that you want to get to. Very good overhead storage um, in the boat, as you can see. So there are just some of the subtle changes we've made. Um, you know, uh, bin uh, arrangements under the sink. Uh, we had a lot of comments about more bin uh, areas on the boat. Now we've got one in the cockpit. We've got one uh, which is basically recycling and general rubbish uh, and an organisation system under the uh, gully sink here, which has uh, been really pleasing to achieve. Uh, great storage under the floorboards. Um, which basically I can show you that. Uh, where's your view on here? So again, look, you know, we don't put floor catches on our cabin soles. You can have it if you want. We're building some boats for clients that uh, Marcus is dealing with, with hinged lift up floorboards, you can have wider access hatches. You need to tell us what you want as a buyer. But uh, just as an example, it's a very sim simple suction cap and you lift up your floorboard. Um, you've got about 750 litres of storage through the main central area here. But if you want, you know, hinged opening hatches, or if you want uh, finger lifts on them, if you want them on the, you know, if you want them bigger, smaller in another area, you give us a brief and we build the boat for you. Yeah. So it's a, a up to the personal uh, buyer, but, um, you know, as a, as a display boat for the Australian market, we're going to be Looking forward to showing this boat off in uh, the Century Cove Yachting Festival next month. Uh, this is our standard recommended layout and uh, concept of a, of, a, of a good all round 50 Iliad uh, long range cruising boat. I, um, so I'll, I'll let you carry on, you Marcus, if you want. So. Thanks, Mark. As Mark's um, pointed out, the galley is a main feature, one of the main features of the main saloon, but in fact, it's almost split into four areas. You've got the galley, uh, the dinette here, the lounge, 
the forward lounge just here and the lower helm. So all are very well utilized areas on the boat. So the dinette, which is adjacent to the galley, has this very clever foldable table. So we found that you don't always necessarily need it open and it gives you a better flow from the galley to the fridge with it open. But those times where you're deciding to eat inside, you can um, open it up and you have these clever stools where you can sit four to five people here quite happily having breakfast or dinner if the weather's bad outside. So that's a nice feature of the boat. You've got more lockers along here with power points in them. Um, the air conditioning for the boat, it has a, a reverse cycle um, 65,000 BTU water chilled air con system. Uh, so throughout the whole boat is fully air conned. Um, moving forward, you step up into the forward lounge without losing any headroom. So it's two meter headroom throughout the boat. So this was cleverly designed on purpose in a way to give people better visibility when they're sitting down in the saloon. So too often we find that um, you're sitting on the boat and you can't see the, the horizon. So uh, Ricardo Baldarelli has been very uh, adamant that's on, in his designs, he wants people to be able to see, you know, all corners and take advantage of the, of the glass all around. So, um, so this lounge is obviously um, a big O-shaped lounge with a removable coffee table, so that's not fixed. And then these ottomans, which are cleverly stored underneath, uh, become really useful. And in fact, the helm chair can also act as another seat if you need it in the lounge. So it's a really nice area, place to be with the opening window. Whatever wind is around with your anchor gets funneled through the boat. So it's a, it's, a, it's, it's fantastic having this window. It's also great for communication between, you know, you and your partner, if you're anchoring or picking up the mooring, um, you can be communicating with, with, uh, with your partner as to what's going on. So um, the main switchboard for the boat is just here. So you have a 24 volt um, house bank with 12 volt, um, like the engine battery, the bath the battery, and a few electronics at 12 volt. But the majority of the equipment on board is all 24 volt. You've got your seven bilge pumps with the alarms here, battery switches, remote start for the generator. This is your inverter controller. There's a five kilowatt standard Victron inverter on board, um, all your battery switches, your tank monitoring, analog gauges. We prefer to use things that we know are tried and proven rather than LED. We can try to avoid it. We use the old fashioned analog, but again, it's a personal choice, whatever, whatever the owner wants. Um, the fire suppression systems here, and then this is all the 240 volt and air conditioning. So um, you can choose to have this perspex or glass, sorry, um, covered cupboard, or you may want to um, have a timber um, cover, it's up to you. So the blinds on the boat, an option is to have motorized blinds. So these are all individually switched, so you can have one up and one down, depending on what you wish, or they can all go they can all synchronize together as you've seen now. Yeah, I think Marcus, it's a really good uh, feature. A lot of people do leave their boat for you know for a month, park it in the marina, uh, go back to you know back to work for a while. Uh, it's really uh, protects the, the furnishings, protects all your interior. It's, it's a good yeah. push of a switch, close your back door, and uh, your boat's you know in, in, in really good uh, shape with a dehumidifier. Uh, sitting on your, your aircon running, 
you, your boat's dry and safe and uh, protected from the elements, you know, when you leave the boat. And also those days where you're parked in the marina yep. and you're in the yep. evening and you want to watch a movie we'll or just something like that. Throw up the middle one, like the ventilation, the air throw up, that's number four. What one, two, three, five? Uh, so number five, you can just select whichever blind you want up. If you've got people you don't want to look at next door in the marina, or uh, you just want some ventilation through, you might be watching a movie and you know, banging in a bay, you just want to get out of the sun and the brightness for the day. Let the ventilation come through to keep the boat nice and uh, shade, well shaded. And, and, and Mark, while, Mark, whilst you're back in there with Marcus. Um, what about the, the client who wants to have a say in terms of floor, carpet, uh, upholstery? Is there... Look, uh, look uh, again, Millie had uh, the, our, uh, you know, our, our marketing phrase is freedom of choice. It's up to every buyer what furniture uh, they want as far as fabrics, timber, uh, flooring. Um, uh, it's, it's up to each individual uh, buyer, what what they do? We're doing, you know, teak and holly floorings. We're doing no, carpet. uh, no carpets. We're doing full carpets. We're doing, um, you know, a lot of different exotic timbers on some of the uh, 60s and 70s we're building. It's really we're doing two pack on a few boats. We don't recommend it. It's not the best uh, finish, I don't think. But in areas it works really well. We do two pack cupboards, but it's up to 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 every buyer to bring what they want to see in their new boat to us and we will create uh, uh, that boat for them. Very good, thank you. So you probably noticed the TV pop, pops up here, so it sits right behind the uh, electrical board. So it's a 43 inch flat screen. Um, and then the final part of the main saloon is the lower helm station. So. Um, you have with Iliad, again, with the freedom of choice, you can choose whatever electronics you like, and you have a wider range of engine choices. In this size engine range, we, we recommend from as low as 220 horsepower Volvos up to 480 Volvos. Um, we also have the selected Yanmar range, and this particular boat has 440 horsepower Yanmars with a 13.5 kilowatt Onan engine. So you can see the layout here, you've got your gauges and rudder angle, electronic um, controls here, your side power thrusters. These are emergency controls for the NY. If, if you have a failing on your electronic controls here, you can operate the engines forward and start and stop, forward and reverse here, which is handy. Um, the police boat has zip wake interceptors on it. Um, and we have automatic settings, so they're very easy to use. Start and stop for the engines. Searchlight, and then the engine diagnostic displays and further ray marine. So, um, I think that's so while, while, we're, while we're there at the engine, uh, at the uh, control panel, at the helm, would you like to yep. just give us a bit of an idea of uh, fuel consumption and also speeds? Sure. So this boat holds two to three hundred thousand litres of fuel. Three thousand. What did I say? <laughs> three hundred thousand. Ten percent of that. So <laughs> three thousand litres of fuel, and at six knots, it's burning one litre per nautical mile. So you'll do if you take away ten percent uh, for safety, you can, you're doing over two and a half thousand nautical miles. And then it does a top speed of 21, 22 knots and a cruising speed between 17 and 19 knots. Fantastic. So, yeah, so your fuel consumption is any from a litre an order per mile up to, uh, you know, whatever you want to burn, depending on how fast you're going. It's about 120 litres uh, an hour at 17 knots. Yeah. Uh, and is that, is Marcus, knots. Marcus, is that a litre? per hour per engine or is that combined? No, that's combined. That's both engines running uh, at uh, six knots. Wow. Uh, you know, a really good um, cruising speed of eight knots. We'll, we'll give you a demonstration of, uh, during this presentation about the quietness on this boat when your motors are running. Now, a lot of people are totally amazed at uh, 
it's like sitting at home doing eight knots along the ocean when you're sitting in this area with uh, the, the back doors closed. If you're in a, you know, you want to get out of the weather, you've, you've got three or four days of cruising to do to get to a remote location. Uh, no better place than being uh, tucked away in this main deck with all the vision and the view uh, and all the comforts of home with the aircon running. Uh, it's, it's a really uh, amazingly quiet place to be. We've done a lot of work on our sound management from the engine room in, into the living area of the boat. Very good. Yeah. So yeah. should we go and have a look at the cabins, Marcus? Yeah, okay. Sorry, Greg? I was just going to say, shall we go and have a look at the cabins? Yeah, yeah. please, follow me. So down here on the starboard side, we have two guest cabins. So this is the aft starboard cabin, which has a number of different variations. At the moment, we have a queen size bed, which is sitting at Ford ships and with great hanging locker space. Behind the door is even more shelving for socks and jocks and things like that. Um, this boat can easily be arranged, this cabin can also be arranged with two twin beds where you're walking down the middle and with a bedside table at the back. So it's a great kids cabin. It can even be made with a Pullman, a single fold up Pullman against this wall or this outboard wall. So you can put three singles in here. Notice the big hull window which is one of the biggest, it's the big, biggest window in, the, in this side of the hull. So it's a really great um, guest cabin with its own ensuite. So fully enclosed shower with um, fresh water, electric flush toilets. You have portholes is yet to be put in uh, for natural ventilation in the window there. And then the extra door here helps this boat, helps the, the, uh, this ensuite act as the day head. So if we were out with some friends, we would close this, close this door off and then this would become the day head used by everybody on board. So moving forward to the forward cabin, in the foyer here we've Got a washing machine, 6.5 kilowatt washing machine with storage under here for cleaning products and a nice little um, table here or a shelf here if you like to put your washing powder while, uh, while you're doing the washing. So it's something that we've learned from feedback from other owners saying it would be nice to somewhere to rest uh, the cleaning gear and then uh, difficult for you to see from there, but there's a nice linen cupboard with two shelves, very deep um, for towels and things like that. Um, moving into the forward guest cabin. This cabin has a huge amount of storage space. So in practice, probably too much for what a guest would need who is staying here. So with these big lockers here, with the addition of some shelving, this would be a great place to keep linen, pillowcases, sheets for the whole boat. Because behind you here, you've got two large hanging lockers for the guests' belongings. You've got all this shelf space and even further up there near the head, head of the bed is even more shelving. Notwithstanding, there's a large drawer under everybody's bed, which is great for putting um, clothes, t-shirts, shorts and so on. Under, under each bunk um, there's also a place to keep the suitcases. So when you have friends who come in or fly in, um, they always look for places to put their suitcase and it's difficult on a boat but um, that becomes, so, solves that problem on an alien. So here you have the ensuite bathroom. Wow. So three bathrooms in total or heads. And on the way out, Rachel, we'll get you to open up that linen cupboard beside the washing machine. Yeah. 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 
under here is where is that's the big five kilowatt inverter. So easy to access if you ever need for maintenance. And then walking back up to the main deck, you've got five steps. And down into the port side, we're now into the owner's suite. So, and this is a real highlight of the boat. So you've got spanning the whole port side. It's actually eight and a half meters long from the head of the bed there to the end of the ensuite. So it's a really spacious, lovely, airy place with lots of natural light. A nice settee there, three big hull windows. So this is a nice little desk, a desk area. So more often than not these days, you have to do some emails or pay the bills. So this is a great little place. Uh, when the boat's full of people, you can close the door here to give a bit of privacy, come down here, do a bit of work. It also doubles as a vanity desk uh, for makeup if you need. And on the back of the door here, here or here we can put a full length mirror. So when you're getting ready to go out for the evening, it's nice to have a full length, full length mirror on board and that's um, the place where we would, we would put that. So again, fantastic storage with two large, it's actually the same full, full hanging lockers with shoe storage underneath. And then huge locker space here for clothes. And then if you go into the ensuite. And then the master ensuite is huge. It's two and a half meters long with a large shower, massive linen cupboard on the right there, electric freshwater flush again. And just while, while you're panning around in there, Rachel, I'll just remind all of our participants, you are welcome to ask questions. Just um, click on the Q&A box and drop us a note if you, uh, if you have any questions you'd like to pose to uh, Marcus or Mark. So two meter, two meter headroom throughout on both sides, all the lower deck has very good headroom. This is a queen size bed with walk around. So it tapers off slightly at the foot of the bed, but you've got a queen size bed here. We can actually fit a king size, but then you lose the walk around, but it's a personal choice. It's really up to you. This is quite a nice little this said tea, it's a nice space, you know, putting your socks on in the morning or throwing your clothes before you jump in the shower. You often think that you might not use it, but I think you find that you use it more than you. Once you have it, you use it more than you think. Okay, shall we um, go upstairs on to the flybridge? Yeah. And just, uh, we'll let Rachel have a pan around in that uh, cabin. That is such an impressive cabin. So on the way past, Mark, that, that, that owner's cabin is so impressive. Oh, look, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the restriction you have with a cat is you've got, uh, you don't have the volume of monohull in a, in a hull. So you've, the, the compromises with a, with a catamaran in a hull is the volume. You don't have the beam. Um, so you can't create uh some of the spaces you want to but you've got a lot of length in the in this hull as you can see with uh separating the, the you know the shower and the the, uh, the ensuite the storage is sensational i'm sure you've shown that through the cupboards and things 
once we go into our 60s and bigger boats, we do a thwart ship sped, so you're facing the sea. Uh, but on a boat this size, you can't really uh, do that. To make a wider hull, uh, which some manufacturers do, you really impact on the sea keeping of the boat. So everything is a compromise. And you've mentioned the 60. When, when will we see a 60? Uh, uh, the first 60 will arrive out uh, here in Australia for the Century Cove Boat Show in uh, 2021. Let's hope the world's open and, and we're, we're moving a bit by then. So uh, 2021, uh, around uh, May, will be the, the, the launch of the 60. Uh, we displayed the 70 at the Century Cove Boat Show last year and we launched the brand in May last year in 2019 uh, at uh, Century Cove. So yes. we're, we're pleased to uh, have uh, 11 boats to build since uh, May last year. So, you know, we're, we're very pleased. Uh, it's exceeded our expectation, the, uh, the order book on Iliad. We were wanting to only really build uh, three or four boats a year, but um, we're gearing up to, to build, you know, a boat every the launch of eight weeks uh, in the 21, 22. Well, it's a credit to you all because it's, it's so far um, with what Marcus and yourself have shown us today, it's a very impressive finish. Yeah, look, just one part of the, um, I'll just check with Marcus, have you finished pretty much showing yep. what you want to show? I just wanted to show you the, uh, we're inside the, the, the boat at the moment. If I start up the engines, the only thing we haven't done yet, which we'll do after this, is the flybridge. Yeah, uh, we'll do that. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity just to show you the, the engines on board. Uh, the, but it's about the noise. We're, we're, we're running two 440 horsepower Yamaha, Yamaha engines at the moment. I'm just going to go into neutral. And I'm going to bring these up to, uh, let, let's say we're doing eight knots. Eight Sorry, knots. I, I, have you got them on now? Yeah, we're now doing, just out of curiosity, out of interest, we are... Okay, now we're doing 1,200 RPM. Let's bring this one back, we're doing a bit more. Like a laundry detergent ad. So we're doing eight knots. If we were at sea now, we're doing eight knots, doing 1,200 RPM with the two engines running. This is the noise that you have inside the boat. It's well, from where from where I'm sitting, uh, I can't tell that there's a, a noise. Okay, well, just to show you how you've got two stages of insulation from this living area. The first is your sliding doors. Now these are uh, uh, two glass panels uh, of laminated glass, so you've got an air void in between them. So once we open the door, you can walk out here, Rachel, and you can hear. You can hear the engines now, Greg, I'm sure. If you come out here. So even the cockpit, I'm not raising my voice to talk. We're doing eight knots at sea. Could you uh, open the engine hatch, Mark? I don't believe you. <laughs> so you can, there we go. to have that quiet space, you, you know, a lot of our uh, buyers have come from the sailing market. Uh, they've had sailing yachts. We, we all love sailing. We're old salts ourselves. And it's a transition from sail to power. Uh, the noise levels is, is something that's quite difficult to, to come to terms with. So we've done a lot of work on, uh, on uh, managing and soundproofing to make sure that, you know, it's really comfortable with eight knots cruising, to sit around the cockpit, it's not in your, it's not annoying the, the sound of your, your engine noise, and particularly when you go inside for, you know, overnight. If you're doing long passages overnight, it's like uh, being in your home. It's really quiet. So that's just uh, something we've done a lot just, of R and D on, and that's across the whole range. Just while you're standing there, the light above your head isn't flickering, is it? No. 
No, no. no but that'll no, be that's the water. That's the water and the sun. No, no, it's the uh, it's the speed of the video. Yeah, it's like oh, when you right. try to video TV. So I just want to let everyone know that it's not a broken line. Okay. That, that sound that sound uh, experiment then was very impressive. Yeah, look, it's a uh, you know that a lot of people have uh, you know uh, have mentioned this in before we did the R and D on this brand back in the uh, you know back in 2015, 2016 about noise management on a power boat, uh, particularly a long range boat. If you're doing you know, if you're crossing to New Zealand uh, for five or six, seven days, just cruising uh, across, you know, and it's cold and it's a bit miserable the weather, you're really on a you're on a floating apartment inside the boat if that's how you want to live. Uh, a lot of people don't like the elements um, unless you know if it's a perfect day, anchored to perfect anchorage. So. Very good. Um, Let's see so what's I'll, upstairs. I'll, 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 I'll just pass you back to Marcus to just. Do you want to explain anything on the engine rooms, Marcus, to the yeah, uh, you, to those people that are having a look? I'll, what I'll probably do, right, so I'll come down and then I'll grab the camera from you. Yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot about the engine base. <laughs> mm. You're doing great work on the camera, Rachel. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Give Rachel a break. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the port engine room where you can see the 440 horsepower Yamaha uh, shaft drive engine. And then right next to me here is the 13.5 kilowatt generator, Onan. And you've got your gas water separator there for the for the generator, so you don't get that uh, that rush of water that you hear sometimes on some older style boats. Yep. So the water goes out under the water, the exhaust um, water goes out under the water. Over on this side, you just got brake, two 20 volt breakers, your fuel filter down here, your coolant, your seawater um, sea intake for the engine, then yep. these. Uh, manifolds for the fuel tank so you can actually and there's the transport pump there you can actually transfer fuel from one side to another so let's say in the scenario that you pulled up alongside and you could only fill one one uh, fuel tank because they're independent you can only fill one side you can transfer 50 percent to the other side there's a camera at the top of the insulated wall you can see so you've got engine room cameras in both engine rooms. There's the fire suppression system that we spoke about. And then these are the engine blowers. So these extract um, extract the hot air out of the engine room. And then in the ceiling there, you can see that's the intake. So that brings the cold air from outside in, and then the blower takes the hot air out. And so, sorry, Marcus, um, what's up on the front, uh, on the starboard side up high there? That's the exhaust. No, the sorry, on the, other, on the other side. Yeah. Uh, there the, that's the engine battery and the generator battery. Okay, that's a really uh, clever spot for the batteries, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no, it's fantastic. So they're strapped down. Um, as we know, these boats were built to CE certification and, uh, and uh, the rooms are very well, easy to get around. I don't know if you can see, you can walk around the engine room can work on on all parts of the engine so engineers love it and as these are boats ideally going to be used for remote cruising um, it's easy for the owner to operate the galvanic isolators just there to for to reduce any corrosion from um, the uh, earth currents and then there's just breakers for the 225 shore power and what so, is directly behind you um, you've got the hot water system, so that's a hot water boiler, so that's run by the engine and the generator and also the um, shore power. Yep. And then in here we have the, uh, to the steering, which is, yes. uh, and I'll <laughs> pop this out. Understood. Very good. 
Thanks, Marcus. So, and in conclusion, I think we'll go up to the fire bridge to show you another really special part of the boat. And uh, Marcus, water maker. Yeah, so what I haven't shown you on the starboard engine room, you have the water maker, which on this boat is has a capacity of 280 litres per hour. And, and, and in there is also the hydraulics for the transom platform and the chiller plant for the air conditioning. So other than that, it's exactly the same. So no generator on that side, the water maker and the hydraulics. And one last question on uh, mechanics before we talk about the flybridge. Solar installations, possible obviously? So we have plenty of space here on the hardtop. Currently there's two large um, solar panels totaling 400 watts. 800 watts, sorry. So yes. 200 going straight into the uh, 24 volt house, uh, house pack. Yes, thank so you. Effectively, the boat is set up that you don't need to plug it into shore power when you're at uh, when you're at anchor for long periods of time. The solar panels should keep your batteries topped up if you manage your power usage. So here, the flybridge layout. We've got 25 square meters of deck space here, and up here is where you really can do some customization. So with a new build. We just give you a blank canvas and you tell us what you would like. Some people prefer the helm to be over to one side or the other or just off center like it is here. This particular layout has a nice bowl shaped bar with the 220 volt barbecue here. Ice maker just there. And then you've got plenty of other storage. You could put a freezer in here, for example. Then you've got cutlery drawers, so you can actually use this as an exterior galley. So instead of having to run up and down to the main galley all the time, uh, you can keep knives and, a set of knives and forks and plastic plates and cups up here when you need. You've obviously got a sink just here, so everything you need. It's actually becomes a really, even though you might think, what do I need a bar for? I'm never going to be serving drinks. It becomes a really good workbench countertop with all the uh, appliances uh, and arms thing. Just here you have uh, another drinks fridge. So again, preventing you from having to run up and down the stairs all the time. So uh, Marcus, we've got a question from Florida. Okay. Um, and the question is, can you uh, have an air-conditioned flybridge and obviously so that means can you have an enclosed flybridge? Uh, Mark, you want to yeah, answer that one? Yeah, you can uh, Greg, you can uh, opt for a fully enclosed flybridge with, uh, with air, fully air-conditioned. Uh, we put a sliding rear door. Uh, in the back it's a different mould to this mould. Uh, you know, the, for a boat this size, the only negativity, it does add a bit of weight to the boat. Um, the boat can tolerate it. Uh, your writing moment on the boat uh, decreases, you know, four or five percent. So, you know, your, your pitch and roll can get a bit exaggerated with a fully enclosed flybridge on a boat this size. We're doing a few of them on the 60s, uh, 70s, of course. But yes, it's possible. Uh, we've got, I think, one order being finalised for a fully enclosed flybridge. And, uh, Basically, you have sliding side windows, you have the front opening window, so you can get some ventilation through the boat without running the aircon. But you know, you've got to uh, run your aircon in the tropics, the tropics most of the time if you're going to fully enclose the flybridge. And of course, uh, excuse all this noise, there's a bit of construction going on in the background here, Greg. But yeah, that's so, okay. You, you can put your helm station on the left or the right of the flybridge if you're. Uh, if you're home port, you're always berthing on the port side or the starboard side. If you want to put your helm station on one side or the other, you can do that. Uh, you know, you can put this galley, you can run through the back here, so you can basically have a, a galley uh, with, with, a, with smalls on the back here, which is quite a, 
a good concept we're working on with a few buyers at the moment. But we, we found a lot of people go around in circles with the layout of this flybridge, and we always seem to come back to this as the best of uh, all the options you've got. We use the space well, the position of the helm station works really well, and particularly getting this big opening, uh, you know, dining area, another dining area or entertainment area. Mark's going to show you it's a uh, you know, dining, it's another dining table. Uh, now, this is on a gas box. Mark has just lifts up that gas box. So you can push the table down, which makes a really nice pocket table. Now, this is great. Like, no one has to, has to get up and out of their chair to move. Uh, and this is generally how you use this area. It's a, and it's a long way to the beer fridge. No, it's not. It's not quite. <laughs> you don't want to get this seat, Greg, because it's always your job to pass the, the, the next drink to the uh, to the guests around the table. But no, look, it's a you know again, it's a you know uh, it's 25 years of listening to customers who are looking for a transition into power boats or to, to upgrade their their power boats, and it's just trying to minimise the compromises in a boat to to have everything you really need. Uh, you know, we, we talked about earlier, we don't, there's not a lot of bling about our boats. We're not trying to uh, have the, the most bling. We're trying to be practical, well-designed, sensible layouts that are very functional for cruising families and uh, cruising couples who want to go and explore the remote places around, uh, around the world. And Marcus, you've obviously been selling power boats for over 15 or 20 years up there in Thailand. As a 50 foot power boat, are you somewhat amazed at the volume? Yeah, it's quite incredible. As I alluded to earlier, you really have to step aboard to appreciate the amount of space. I mean, this is a 25 square meter deck area. The main saloon, the interior of the main saloon is 35 square meters, 12 square meters in the cockpit. So you've got massive amount of room. So if you're looking for most, I find in my time, people will buy a boat and then they'll come back to me and say, look, we've worked out what we want now. We want range, we want comfort, and we want stability. And I think with Iliad, we've, we can offer all those three. And um, um, with the fact that you can semi-customize your design, you can really walk away with the boat with your own um, signature on it. And I think it's a, it's, it's, something unique to the market. Very good. Well, listen, gentlemen, I think we're getting to the end of uh, our presentation for today. I think the next time we do this, we're going to, to uh, get you to take the boat to somewhere like Tangaluma and sit out at anchor where there's no other noise. <laughs> yeah, no, look, we apologise. Uh, we're in um, the boat works uh, on the Gold Coast and um, the, the, uh, the expansion here is... Uh, is at a very high pace. They're building new uh, refit sheds, new uh, display uh, sheds for, for boat sales, officers, marinas. So we're right in the heart of it and uh, giving Tony Longhurst a plug. Good on you, Tony. Uh, we're very proud to be a part of the boat work. So but, uh, no, it's a little bit noisy, but uh, that's um, the, the way it is today. We apologize to those. That that's fine. Kind of hard to hear. And I'll just ask if there's anyone who's watching who'd like to ask any questions. You've probably got around about one minute to post your question uh, before we uh, let the guys si sign off. Uh, is there anything else you want to cover, Gus? I'm just going to ask Rach to stand at the helm so people can get an idea of the visibility looking forward. So you have you can clearly see each bow and having the central helm gives you a great um, Vantage point as a as a captain. Very impressive. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, Greg, do we have any uh, questions from uh, from the uh, people? Uh, on the no, I think you've done such a good job, gentlemen, that we don't today. So, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll say thank you. Uh, thanks to Rachel for great camera work today, and thank you to Mark and Marcus for your wealth of knowledge. It's been a very good presentation and one that we'll be able to put up on YouTube. Just while you're there, I'm just going to go back to share screen, Mark, just if you could, uh, maybe Rachel will come over beside you. I'm just going to go to the layout sheets. 
Um, right. So this is the uh, from uh, from current slide. So I, I don't think there's too much here, but I just know we did have these layouts. So that's the layout that we looked at with you. On, Greg, on Greg, we might just go down to the main deck uh, okay. to get away from yeah. the noise. So if yeah. that's okay. So we'll just shoot down there. If you keep your yep. presentation there, and uh, we'll be with you in about 10, 15 seconds. So that's the layout we looked at today. Um, and uh, you can talk to Marcus. Uh, and he can then also share with you the other layouts that are possible. Yeah, so, so that's our standard recommended layout that we, is tried and proven. Uh, you can go into a four cabin layout, you can go into a two cabin layout. So uh, we, we uh, would have shown you the crew berth forward. We've got a crew berth forward uh, on this particular boat, but uh, you can also have two crew berths uh, for, you know, uh, you know, for times, well, for young kids, if you just want a few extra berths. Uh, so you can ultimately sleep up to 10 people on an Ilya 50 uh, in their own cabins or berths. Uh, very good. So, okay. So thank you very much. Uh, terrific. I suppose you gents are going to throw the ropes now and head off. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to uh, throw the ropes uh, and uh, head off uh, back home to uh look after the the family and the kids for the weekend actually so it's a weekend coming up here in uh in uh, it's friday so we're all all heading back up to our uh, lovely sunshine coast all right well on that note we'll say thank you and i'm going to uh press uh stop and uh we'll uh finish the uh presentation there thank you very much well done okay thank just wanna, yeah thank uh, everyone for uh uh, who has dialed in to, to watch. Uh, we hope you've learned a bit more about Iliad Catamarans and Multi Hull Solutions, our Asia Pacific uh, exclusive dealer, and uh, the great work they're doing. And we really appreciate it, Marcus. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Thanks mate. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Well done. Bye bye. <laughs>